Bernard Blanc, thank you so much for being here with me today, or actually for having me here at the A System headquarters in Paris. Um, so you're the business development manager, but before we get into your role here at A System, I just want to know a little bit about you, where sure. you grew up, and how did you get into the nuclear space? Right. So first of all, I was born in the south of France, uh, which is not obvious when I speak English, but when I speak French, I have a, a slight accent in, in, from coming from the south, close yeah. to the Mediterranean Sea. Um, I did my study in university also in the south, in Aix-en-Provence, which is uh, north of Marseille, very famous city for many things, for arts and, and music and, and also engineering. But you didn't start, study art and music. No, 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 no. I was not uh, prepared to do that. So just uh, <laughs> just studying engineering and doing some sports and joining sports and, and these kind of things. And um, when I my first job was in the nuclear, and uh, just after I, 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 I've been graduating engineer, I started in the nuclear in the, in the south of France, building a new facility. I was uh, I was a trainee uh, for for some commissioning and construction activities. And then it was my first contact, let's say, with the nuclear, with the nuclear business and with nuclear sector in France, which is, as you know, very strategic for France. Right. Uh, France decided in the middle of the seventies to go full for for strong uh, power generation nuclear power plant program. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so, I mean, it was my first contact, and it was quite interesting to see how it was working at that time. Yeah. So how did uh, you know you wanted to get into the nuclear business and that's what you wanted to study in college? I mean, as I said, starting in nuclear, but after I had various um, um, activities and roles and projects in France and in the world, uh, not in nuclear, okay. just to discover industry. I was involved in building construction in Saudi Arabia, for example. I was involved in uh, steel industry in France and then in Indonesia, for example. After I, I worked for more than three years in the car automotive sector, uh, again, as an engineer for construction of, of new facilities. So I had, a, I'd say, a various experiences around nuclear uh -huh. and a very interesting one to, to strengthen my, 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 my experience and my expertise. And then I moved to, to more um, managing roles, um, operation roles, and then business development. And I came back to the nuclear when I, was, uh, when I became a business developer manager because at that time, Especially in France, we had to, I see them as a long story in the nuclear sector in France. Yeah, let me but, hear uh, it. Yeah. Um, not me, but, but our system. Our system yeah. was born in the nuclear in the 60s, in 60, 65. A team of five engineers decided to, let's say, set up a new company uh, to support architect engineer or owner company uh, in this very specific phase where you have to commission to start up and to uh, to license the, the the facility itself to be to have an operation license to be able to operate a facility needs several thousand uh, verification tests and so on uh, especially because in nuclear it's very regulated sector and you have a strong regulation body in France which is called ASN Autorité de Sûreté Nucléaire it's it's NRC in the U in the US it's ONR in the UK and so on, so on. So this is very strong. So to be able to have the operation license, then you have to, to do a lot of things. So, um, so that was the very beginning of the Assystem company. It was not called Assystem. Just five time. engineers. Yeah, just five together. engineers. Like, it's like yeah. a startup, you know. It's in, in, the, in the middle of the 60s, 60, 66, it was like a startup. Yeah. And they, they, were, they were experienced engineers. They, they, they did uh, already a lot of job in, in the nuclear sector, but it was very at the very beginning. And then after our system grew up, let's say, in, uh, in the nuclear sector. And when we reached the middle of the 90s, all the big construction uh, projects were about to, to finish in mm -hmm. France. The power plant, the reprocessing that? plant. Because as, as soon as it's finished, uh, then uh, you have to operate them. Uh, they, so it was all, like a big period of construction yes, all at 20 once? 20 years, more than 20 years construction for wow. nuclear power plant, enrichment plant, fuel reprocessing plant. So uh -huh. more than 20, 20, 25 years construction, big, big construction wow. to set up all the, um, all, the, all, the, all the facilities. So middle of the 90s, it's, we are reaching the end of this big construction phase mm -hmm. and moving to a full operation phase. So for sure, we develop our services for less engineering and construction, for more support to operation, optimization, maintenance activity, these kind of things. And um, when we felt the small signs in beginning of the 2000, between 2000 and 2005, uh, uh, 
the new construction phase or reconstruction phase was about to start. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's when I, 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 um, I came back to the nuclear sector with my full experience of other activities, to, to say to restart our activities in, in nuclear, but with another view, with another way to, to work, with another way to, to develop our business. Yeah. So it was around 2004, 2005. And I became the uh, nuclear business development manager for, for our system. Yeah. And I would think that... I was very excited anyway. So it's more than 15 years now. Right. And uh, we, um, I think we are very, very lucky in our system because we, uh, nuclear is quite, it's very dynamic currently. Even if the nuclear sector and the nuclear is always a bit ambiguous, you know, because some are against, some are, are supporting the nuclear. But for, for the French and nuclear industry, it's, it, we are strong in France. Right. Uh, we have we have a lot of many companies involved. We have technologies. Even if the construction of the uh, flammable-free EPR is quite difficult right now, it's not the only um, project difficult to be to be built in the world mm -hmm. because the AP thousand uh, in in China is difficult too. In Finland, it's difficult. All around the world, the nuclear new build are difficult projects. Yeah. So that's why we have to not only in France but I think in the world we have to reinvent what the, the way to, to build the nuclear facility because on my point of view it's also the point of view of our system uh, the nuclear has something to do in the the, 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 the electricity generation no carbon uh, electricity generation in the world right clean uh, so, energy. but we have to clean energy we have to find something to, to improve the performance of the nuclear project and our system right. is, is working every day to try to find this as an engineering company yeah, and I was going to say that your background in or your other work in construction must help you tremendously in this job because a huge part of the the problems with the nuclear industry are getting the plants built on time and right. on budget. Budget on time. Yeah. So what are some of the new ways that you see construction becoming more efficient and more cost effective for nuclear power plants? I think um, the, 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 the nuclear well tried already some some ways to improve this uh, with a more modular construction, for example, which is mm -hmm. the, the case for the American design, uh, the, the IP-1000. Yeah. It works uh, half and half, let's say. It's, uh, it's a way to, to, be, to be improved, but uh, it's not the only way. I think the big, uh, the big change is coming from, from digital tools, I think, and the new way to engineer and, and to create the link between the engineering phase and the construction phase. Mm -hmm. And also, I think in nuclear, it's like in sports. You, if you stop, yeah, you, the, the, your muscles are, are beginning small. So in nuclear, you, you have never stop. You have always to build and to rebuild, to create skills, create new people, new way to work. But if you stop projects, then it, it's much more difficult to restart. Absolutely. So that's, that's the, 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 the area where we're trying to work. Digital tools, never stop, modular construction. Right. So when you talk about the tools to connect construction yeah. and engineering, mm. how do you actually do that? How do you make engineers not focus so much on designing, you know, new cores and new innovative processes and building? Yeah, and I mean, again, a system is a chance because, as I explained to you already, we were born in the middle of '66 uh, in, a, in mainly in the construction phase, construction commissioning phase. So most of our engineer at the very beginning are not designing engineer, they are mm -hmm. construction or commissioning engineer. Got so it. first of all, we, we try to have the best understanding of, of the facility itself, the way it's running, the way it will be operated, the way uh, the performance, uh, the, the facility will have to deliver. And, and then keeping our, our experience on this final phase, let's say, try to have the, the best design, mm -hmm. the, the, the easiest one, to, to be sure that we don't, when we design a facility, we don't forget the construction and the commissioning phase, which is finally what we want to find at the end of the, of the, that, that's the way we try to manage. It's not so easy. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's this, I, I would to say, uh, I would like to say it's, it's part of the system way to take care of the construction and commissioning phase during the design phase. Yeah, and do so by not only hiring nuclear engineers, but also hiring construction engineers. Right, exactly. And stuff. trying to mix the, the to have mixed team uh, with people who are fully designed and people who are coming from construction or or, uh, or commissioning commissioning more than construction, in fact. Yeah. Because in, in a project you have you have the design phase and you have the construction and 
we anticipate that the, the people have have specific uh, mindset for 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 design. If you want to take a design engineer and you bring him on site, he, will, he won't be very happy because construction activity is very specific as well, and the mindset of the people are a bit different. So the skills are a bit different. Right. So the idea is try to have a. Um, a kind of movement between design and construction and commissioning people to be sure that they have a, they have the whole set in their experience. Right. Not easy to manage. Not easy to yeah, manage. Easy. <laughs> but that's, 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 that's the way I think the, the nuclear sector in the world um, have to, has to take, take into account to be sure that we'll, we will have um, a better performance in the construction for the, for the future. Yeah, because yeah, that's really where the fate of yeah. nuclear lies is that's getting right. it built. <laughs> so we have some ideas like that, but uh, not easy to, to push every day. Yeah, but we, you... we have we have uh, we are an engineering company to support our customers. So you know, the, 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 to reach a good performance, it's it's not only a system; it's also a system with um, with the customers. So we right. have we have to progress together. Uh, that's the only way to to perform. I think. What what sort of customers do you have? We have um, a French customer for sure in the nuclear. As, as I said previously, we are. In France, quite strong. We have EDF for sure, who is the uh, electricity company, which but is right down the street. I think uh, I saw. They, they have big tower in yeah. uh, the France quarter. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, uh, it's a big, strong company, as most of the power generation company in the world, anyway. Uh, but the, the specificity of EDF is that they have also a strong engineering department because they want to be able to be an architect engineering. They want to be able to design. The facility not only to operate, which is which is completely different than the the, um, the U.S. way, where you have strong engineering company able to develop technology and build facility, and then uh, after that you have you have an operation company uh, which is just operating the facility. It's a bit different uh, in France. The EDF is very integrated. Okay. They are they are the architect engineer and they are also the operator. So we are mainly as as an engineering company, uh, we are supporting the engineering department of EDF. Right. So um, it's it's a bit different. On the international market, it's completely something different because the, the marketing is looking for an engineering company able to handle the design of, of a part or a full facility, full nuclear facility. And when we think nuclear facilities, it's not only uh, a nuclear power plant. Around the nuclear power plant, we, you have many facilities like uh, uh, emergency diesel uh, building, waste treatment building, spent fuel, fuel building, many, many facilities around the, the heart of the nuclear power plant, which is the nuclear steam supply yeah. system, which produce uh, steam and then, and then electricity. So we develop, we have developed in our system capabilities to, to be able to design all those buildings around, uh, let's say, the, the, the reactor itself. Mm -hmm. And um, and um, so I mean we are on the international market. We are going with a, a more global uh, architect engineering offer than we are doing in France, due to the fact that the the, the customer is itself they are the architect engineer. Yeah, it's maybe a bit more too technical what I'm trying to explain to you. <laughs> no, no, it's a good explanation. Um, but you weren't always on the management side of it because when you first started, you were designing nuclear plants yeah, was and the facilities. Engineer. You were commissioning engineering. Yeah. So what's I'm commissioning engineering? So commissioning engineering is more, as I said, is how to how to test and to license the facility, and then get to operation. It's a very specific phase. You have to, uh, let's say, approve the uh, the contracts of the the the, um, the key constructors, the key construction company. Uh, you have to check uh, if the if the all the systems are running very well and, and giving the performance as, as it is described in the technical specification. You have to involve the, the future uh, people for operation and to train them on the facility. And, and then after you have to ramp up the facility to reach the full performance. This is a an, an commissioning engineering activity. So it's it's interesting one because it's, it's technical, it's um, management, it's coordination, mm -hmm. it's a um, relationship between the customer and the, the constructor, the construction company, the engineering company. So, um, and you have to explain every day what you want to do. Um, so that's, uh, that's, that's mainly my background as an engineer. So this was like really what you studied in, yes, in your undergraduate. That's amazing. I don't think we have this degree in the U.S. Again, um, in, the, in, the French, uh, in France, we have what we call engineering school. 
uh, which is which is different from the one you have in the US. In the US, you have big universities, mm -hmm. and uh, in France, we have universities. We we have this French specificity, which is to have to 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 have to have set up a very specific engineering school. Um, and uh, to train people not only on one area, not only we are not mechanical, we are not electrical engineer. Mm -hmm. We try to 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 give, uh, let's say, a, a, a general knowledge to the engineer. And after, uh, when you are graduate, you can have uh, what we call one or two years of specialty, and and then go for uh, mechanical or electrical or something different. So I'm more my 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 study was more. Uh, Generally speaking, uh, to have a global understanding of, of the techniques. Yeah. It, and again, this is a French specificity. Is it common to study that? Or like were your parents or brothers or sisters engineers and commissioning engineers? Or how did you know that that was what interested you? When I started my engineering school, I was not, uh, let's say, uh, uh, I didn't think to, to go for commissioning. Say hmm. when you start university or studying, I say I want to be an engineer because I'm I want to I want to build something somewhere. Yeah, uh, that was my my, my belief. So, um, and then after my first job was in commissioning, so it was fine. But uh, I was not trained as a commissioning engineer. I was trained as an engineer, and and my my uh, I wanted at that time to to be able to build something. I wanted to build something to uh, help the world to. Uh, to improve the, uh, uh, the the human being, right? All right. Which is what you do now with your work in ITER? Yeah, ITER. Let's go, let's go to ITER. So ITER it's a bit different. It's a nuclear. It's a bit different because it's fusion. Yeah. Whereas um, most nuclear is fission. Yeah, fu it's fission. Uh, so fission is quite industrial. Fusion is still, let's say, R and D or uh, research. And why is that? If you want to explain just like what fusion exactly is and why it is difficult to make it commercial as compared to fission. Um, it's a bit difficult to explain what is fusion today. It's, fusion is like uh, uh, recreate on Earth what happened in the sun. <laughs> right? Easy. <laughs> not so easy. I <laughs> uh, when I say that like that, you understand that it's not easy. Yeah, it's more than complicated. It's complex. Right. So it's an old it's an old uh, area of investigation from from men it started more than one year ago, uh, one hundred year ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it's progressing very slowly because you need uh, when you want to improve, when you want to understand what what's going on in a fusion reactor, you need bigger and bigger machine. Mm -hmm. So. The, the labs in the world, in the US, in Russia, all around the world, they started with small machines to understand what's going on and how we can improve the, uh, uh, the, the way to build it and to, to, to manage it. And now with ITER, as you know, it's a, it's a unique international collaboration involving seven partners. The US first, for sure. Uh, China, Korea, South Korea, Russia, Japan, India and Europe, which is more than 39 35 countries. So it's quite a unique partnership mm -hmm. to share uh, knowledge of fusion and to share also the funding of, of the project. Uh, and there is another specificity, which is all the partners, they bring fund, but they bring in-kind contribution. And the purpose of the in-kind contribution is to be able to set up an industrial network in each country Mm -hmm. for the next phase, which will be for each country to build its own fusion reactor. Interesting. So, I mean, it's, it's a, a long-term commitment for those partners in yeah. the world. It's not only building one reactor, it's also setting up uh, an industrial uh, network in the world to involve industrial company to be able to build PCs, components, and so on. Right, so you right. have basically like your test reactor, and once you guys prove that that right. can so work, you commercialize ITER will it. will be the biggest test reactor in the world, ne never built. Uh, it will normally allow uh, the partners to understand how to manage and to control the fusion reaction, uh, which is 1,000 degrees inside the reactor itself. Uh, we are at the edge of many things, especially in, in materials, uh, and, and so, again, ITER will allow to understand what's going on and to improve the technology to be able to build something which will produce electricity because ITER won't produce electricity. 
So right. again, it's a research reactor, but the biggest in the world. And it will be anyway, for sure, a step forward to be able to have, uh, let's say, at the end of this uh, century, fusion as a, a way to produce electricity in a safe way. Uh, it will be a nuclear facility, but it's it, it producing a very, very low level of waste. Mm. And and the uh, uh, the uh, you don't need uranium uranium to to, 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 to manage a fusion right. You need just uh, uh, sea water, and uh, it's it's a bit uh, simple what I say. But uh, I mean you have uh, a kind of uh, infinity uh, in the resources to be able to to, to run a fusion reactor. So it's not mm. for today. Yeah. It should be for the end of the century, uh, but it's really um, uh, a kind of um, uh, an infinite uh, uh, energy, in fact. And if you look forward and you go to the to the to see some good movie of anticipation movie, uh, they already uh, use um, fusion energy. Like for yeah. example, in the Star Wars, in the Star Wars, <laughs> you have a very famous. Uh, uh, the Millennium Falcon, which is uh, which which use uh, uh, fusion energy. You have uh, the movie with uh, Tom Cruise, which is called Oblivion. Again, yeah. you have the big tower pumping the seawater. It's it's to produce energy through fusion. Yeah. You have uh, passengers, passengers. Uh, you know the two, the the man and the, you di didn't watch this movie, Passengers. You know, it's uh, a couple uh, traveling to very far. Uh, planet around the, and and in, in this um, how do you call it, shuttle there is a big uh, fusion reactor to produce electricity so fusion it's part of our future already yeah <laughs> at least the public has accepted it as part of our For future sure. already and again it's yeah. very safe it's uh, it's nuclear but it's not produced just not it's much more uh, much less dangerous than a uh, fission uh, nuclear power plant. So I think for me, for sure, it's it's future. Yeah. So, I mean, you've touched on it a bit. Okay. I'm going to ask you a hard question. Uh, uh, <laughs> so we talk about using nuclear as clean energy before. Um, and a big part of why so many people are now starting to support nuclear is to address climate change issues. So why do you think that it's worth it to you know, in a sense, wait to address climate change by focusing on fusion instead of putting just all of our efforts into fission? I confirm. It's a hard question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Currently, we are not putting uh, all our uh, effort in fusion or in fission. I think we, we have to go ahead improving the fission reactor, mm -hmm. which is, as I said, very already very industrial, especially the pressurized water reactor. Uh, we have to improve the way to build this kind of, of reactor. This is the answer because today it's not acceptable to spend billion and to to take more than ten years to be able to build this. Yeah. Uh, if we are not able to improve this, then nuclear won't play a significant part in the production of electricity. But it's on the way. On the other hand, if you want to find uh, the energy of the future, you have to, to invest in fusion because it's an answer. A lot of people understand that it's an answer for the need of energy of the future. So let's let's go both. It's 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 different project. One is R&D, still R&D, mm -hmm. try to understand. Need a lot of money for sure. Uh, and the other and the other one is more an industrial um, you know, project, let's say, to to be able to set up the technology is quite manage, well managed now. We know about the technology; we can still improve. But okay, uh, the, 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 I think the main focus has to be on the, the way to to design and build in a, an acceptable time, acceptable time, and acceptable budget. Right. Today it's not acceptable. If you go to the if you go to a bank and you say I need uh, ten billion to build one reactor, they say, "Come on, it's not possible." So this has to be improved. But it was the same when I was in the car, the automotive factory um, business in more than 25 years, um, especially in France, but I think it was the same in the US. When you decide to start a new, a new car and then you put, uh, you put the car in the market, it was seven years, mm -hmm. very long. Yeah. Today it's um, less than three years, two and a half years. Yeah, because they improve the process because they really put energy into, you know, making the the products be able to be produced quickly and 
be introduced in different car models. So if we that's right, that's right. But it's uh, it was an yeah. answer to be able to to live, let's say, because if you at that time if you were not able to change the way to design and build the car, mm -hmm. you were dead. Many company, many car companies uh, uh, disappeared because they were not able to change. Yeah. Uh, and now the, the 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 car companies are uh, beginning are becoming more bigger and bigger, like. Uh, uh, Chrysler and, and, and Fiat, for example, like Ford's a big one, um, and gathering um, several um, um, small companies, uh, keep, keeping the keep, keeping the trademark, but, but let's say uh, 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 grouping and, and all the, 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 the factories on these kind of things, and even the, even the R&D and trying to keep the very specificity of each, of each trademark, which is, for example, uh, Uh, Ferrari is a sports car, uh, Dacia is, uh, is, is, uh, is a low-cost car. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fair to compare what we have. Uh, and it's, it's working, it's working because the, the, the car company seems to be in a good, uh, in good shape right now. But yeah. it's a strong competition. If you want to be the first, if you want to more than survive, if you want to develop yourself, you have to improve every day. And this is, I think, the, the, the fact for nuclear today. Yeah. The competition is smaller because you have a, a, a small number of factors in, in the world four, five, six maximum. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw that with one project, you can collapse the company, coming back to Westinghouse with, uh, with the American project. So it's very, uh, and we saw also that most of the projects are finally supported by, by the government, by the state, in some way. Yeah. Some way. So do you think that it's better when the projects are supported by the government then? As it is long to build a nuclear power plant, and as it is very costly, mm -hmm. today it's not ready to be a full private uh, investment. So if you are not, and it's also linked, let's say, to, to the state policy uh, in the uh, electricity production development. Uh, if you have no electricity today, you have no development. So mm -hmm. it's so crucial for each country. A group of country to be able to uh, to be uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, sustainable in the uh, in, in the way you produce and you use electricity that uh, you, you need the, the, the state has to have a kind of influence in the way uh, the electricity is, is produced. It's the case in the, in the U.S. also, as far as I know, because all the the the, the, the operators are mainly private company, but mm -hmm. most of the time. They say to the to the state, uh, either you we find we have to find an agreement for taxes or these kind of things. I don't have the details, but I can imagine what it could be. Yeah. Or we close the power plant. Right. So you know, it's it's not directly a support. It's not an investment, but it's a way also to to accept that uh, the nuclear is it's a bit, a bit specific mm -hmm. and uh, needs an involvement of the states. Yeah. Even if, if it, uh, EDF, it's a bit different because EDF is a, is a mainly government state company. Uh, it's the same in Korea with CAPCO, the same in Russia with Rosatom. Mm -hmm. okay, in the States, it's a bit different because most of the operator companies are private company, but right. they have a kind of agreement for each state to be able to operate in a, in a good economic way, way the, 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 the power plant and to be able also to invest for the security, for the safety, for the improvement, and to, extend, and to extend the life cycle. Yeah. But so you don't think that if it was more privately managed, that the construction would be incentivized to be done quicker because they want to see their investment pay off faster? Don't forget that um, there is a strong partner in each pro nuclear project, which is the nuclear uh, authority. The regulator. The regulator. Yeah. And um, passing all the milestones to have the license to be able to build, to be able to operate, it, it's a, a strong achievement. So for sure, this, this kind of uh, um, authority are independent from the government. They have to be independent, uh, but, it, but it's, it's a strong player, it's a strong partner of, of, the, of each project. And uh, sometimes it's difficult, I think, to... Uh, as a private company to be able to handle all those regulator uh, regulations right. uh, and, and to cope with the, the construction business model and the regulation. 
because it's nuclear and because you have a lot of people around and because it's safety and, and so on. It would be different for fusion, even if uh, even if it's also a nuclear facility. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to ask. Is are we even in the stages of looking at regulations for fusion yet? Don't forget that uh, ITER will be the first uh, fu nuclear fusion facility in the world. The first like demonstration that fusion works. No, the first which is regulated as okay. a nuclear facility. Okay. Right. All the others uh -huh. currently existing and running are smaller. Mm -hmm. and not classify as a nuclear facility. And okay. what's the benefit of being classified as a nuclear facility? Um, I think it's mainly, um, it's mainly uh, the fact that you, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a warranty for all the people that this facility, this nuclear facility, is well-built, well-operated, uh, safe, uh, and so on. Mm. If, you have, if you want to have the people supporting your nuclear facility, because nuclear has a bad uh, history, if you remember, because the, the, at the very beginning, nuclear was used for the war, for weapons. And we, had, uh, we had some bad experience in the world with that. Mm -hmm. It's an, an use of nuclear for producing electricity is quite new. It's uh, after around the, around the 60s or the, or the 50s. So it's very new, yeah. in fact. But we have this... Uh, this, this uh, footprint, let's say, or, uh, of bad experience with nuclear use as, 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 as a weapon. And there is always a link, I think, in the mind of people between, but yes, but nuclear, we have weapons, we have missiles, and we can make a, a, a very strong war. But, but in fact, we have to explain, OK, there is this. It's, 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 it's the case today in the world, mm -hmm. as we know, especially also in France. Uh, but we have also a very, uh, uh, let's say, um, civil use of nuclear, which is profitable for, for human being, which is to produce electricity. Right. So it's a way, so to have a strong uh, uh, regulator, make the people, I think, more, more confident in the fact that a uh, nuclear facility is regulated. So it's, it's, yeah, there is a, quite a lot of constraints, but that's a way to, to warranty the, the, the safety of each facility. That's yeah. a benefit, I think. Yeah. I have two more yeah. hard questions. questions? Yeah, but then we'll get back into how a system and IDER are working sure. together. Um, so my first hard question would be: a, a bit ago, you said that fusion is safer than fission, yeah. and so one thing that <clears throat> you know that made me think about is that fission is safe, right? It's yeah. hardly it's have hardly ever hurt anybody, and it works. You know, so and it's regulated already. So I'm going to push this again. How could you justify spending more time and more money developing fusion and selling it as something safer when we already have fission that is safe and cheaper and regulated and ready to go, essentially? Um, and I'll ask my other one now, too, just so that I don't forget it. Um, and then so you mentioned that basically we would regulate the fusion industry so that the public is confident that it is safe. But if it's already safe without regulations, then wouldn't putting regulations on it just make it have the same problems that fission has as getting constructed on time and on budget and, um, you know, being acceptable? Because when we put regulations on things, people think that maybe they're just inherently not safe. Right. <laughs> uh, Throw all first of that question. Money. First question. Um, Fission is, is well controlled today, well managed, and we have a strong industry in the world. Um, but we need uranium to be able to do that. Mm. We have uranium for more than 100 or maybe 150 years, which is, which is quite good. But one day it will stop. Mm -hmm. If we are able to develop fusion, it's a non-limited energy. Because, because you just need seawater. Right. Something like that. It's deuterium and tritium, in fact. Okay, it's a bit more difficult, but okay. So that's why I say it's, it's energy of the future because we see, we see as, as for the oil, oil and gas, we, we see one day there is a peak oil somewhere. We don't know exactly where, but okay. We are able today to pump oil uh, down in the, in, the, in the deep sea, but one day we know that it will be finished. Right. It's the same for fission and uranium. And we don't see the end in the case of the fusion. Hmm. Okay, there is no end, yeah. in fact. Right? So if we want so to travel renewable. from Earth to another planet, yeah. the galaxy, we need something different, which is something more powerful. 
We are celebrating uh, this week the the first man in the moon on the moon. Yeah. It's, it's today, I think. Or, uh, it was in '69. You were not born. I was very young. <laughs> uh, and it's, I mean, for human being, it's you, it's crucial. I mean, it's fantastic to have a man on on on, on the moon. It was, I mean, unbelievable. Right. That's uh, I used. I had the pleasure to visit the the the, the Apollo shuttle and the module. People were crazy to be to say, okay, I go in this box. You know? <laughs> right. So and it was a, a, a big step forward for technology, for improvement, for many, many, many areas. And I think fusion is exactly the same. Don't see fusion only as a big investment to find a new reactor of the future. See fusion industry as a way to progress on, on several areas, materials, technologies, mm. construction, methodology, uh, making the world working together. On either side, you have Chinese, Japanese, Indian. It's right. fantastic. Yeah. And some areas of the world, you have wars. You have wars. People are fighting it. In this area of, uh, of, of the world, people are working together to build the future of human beings. Yeah. It's fantastic. That is fantastic. That's You're a good difference. salesman. I'm a salesman, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm, I'm strong willing. Uh, I trust this. Really, it's, 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 it's very important, I think, for, for everybody. It's a long-term commitment. Yeah. I won't see the end. <laughs> uh, but for good for my kids and my grandkids, I'm sure of that. Right. Uh, the second question uh, regarding um, why to regulate the, the fusion, um, it's, as I say, it's very difficult to explain how it works to people uh, around the world. Mm -hmm. What is fusion, fission? If you are not an engineer or, or something, that a physician, it's very good to understand and to explain. So again, to be regulated for the for the people around, uh, prove that uh, it's very um, uh, let's say controlled. It's very professional. It's very there is a lot of constraints to be sure that it's safe and operates safely. I think that's that's the way uh, to and, and ITER is has a very strong communication department to, to be able to inform the, 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 the public, to inform people. If you want to visit it there, you can, uh, you can book a visit on, on their site because they want to explain a lot what's going on there in, uh, in ITER site and, and what they are currently building. For sure, it's long, it's costly, mm -hmm. but it's a way also to, to, to move forward. And it will be as, as the, the first man on the moon, I think, uh, starting ITER and, and operating ITER and will be really a strong step forward to understand uh, fusion energy for the future. Yeah, and it almost sounds like you're saying that putting up the cost and the time now to secure it as a long-term energy source because you have yeah. the public support is worth right, it. Right, exactly. Yeah. You okay. have to. Yeah, go ahead. No, no that's all right. <laughs> if, if the people understand uh, what they have to understand, because nuclear, again, coming back to the to the, 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 the black year of the nuclear when using the uh, nuclear as a weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, now you have to make the people more confident to, 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 to have them supporting the, 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 the nuclear energy. Uh, because I think uh, there is no alternative. You need nuclear to produce uh, low carbon electricity. So you have to have the support of the people. So we have to explain. And the nuclear is always seen as something, you know, secret. We, we don't know exactly. They don't tell us the truth. Yeah. They don't tell us all. This is not true today, but it's it's difficult to explain. Right. It's difficult to explain. Yeah, and gain that trust back. All right. Yeah. So what's A Systems role in the ITER project? So we have several involvements since uh, the very beginning, in fact, because the, the ITER organization, French company, was established uh, in 2005, and we started our first contract uh, in 2006, supporting ITER for nuclear safety engineering, as well in France, our system understands very well the French regulation. So we, mm -hmm. we had the first very small contract to support them in understanding the French regulation. Um, then after we, we add and we still have involvement in engineering and design of key components of the machine itself. So again, supporting ITER with our um, local design office. And the involving roughly 100, 100 people currently close to the close to the, the site, and we have two others involvement. First of all, for the architect engineering of the buildings, buildings or utilities, uh, ventilation, lower and high voltage, these kind of things. Uh, as member of a European team, 
of four companies uh, with an English company called Atkins, which is mm-hmm. SNC, uh, Aegis, another French company, and a Spanish company, which is called Empresarios Agrupados. So we decided to team. Mm-hmm. We have set up a specific uh, purpose vehicle, which is called Engage. And uh, this, this uh, company is, is, is the architect engineer for the buildings and utilities. And we have another involvement, big one, uh, a team of um, British company or Scottish? British company, which is called Wood. It was AMEC for Sir William previously. Yeah. Wood acquired uh, this company. Um, Korean Capco, Capco Engineering and Construction System. So we team together to create again another specific purpose vehicle, which is called Momentum, which is in charge of the uh, uh, the construction of, uh, in terms of engineering, in terms of supervision, coordination, um, uh, inspection, uh, validation of the construction of the uh, all the components uh, of the, the facility. Not only the reactor itself, but mm-hmm. all the plant facility which we need uh, to operate the machine. So yeah. these are two. So globally, it's it's roughly around something like 150, 150, 180 uh, people from a system involved every day in ITER science. It's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's a uh, huge commitment. It's a huge commitment. Yeah. And a long term commitment. Don't forget that we start in 2005. Right. And um, so most, most of our contracts are running until 2025, wow. 2028, because the first phase will start in 2025. With the first plasma and the full power of ITER will be reached in 2035. And are you guys on track to actually meet those goals right now? The project, I think, uh, yeah, it's quite uh, it's moving forward quite uh, quite good now, quite fastly. Um, the, the the goal of the first plasma in 2025 is still the target. Yeah, for sure, it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit uh, tricky, I don't know you can say, uh, difficult, but... Uh, <laughs> of course, it's but, like putting uh, man uh, on the moon. But again, um, again, it's a huge organization, international one, which is one of the difficulties for sure, but it's one also of the answer. If you don't have this international collaboration, you don't have the project. Right. Uh, so every day, um, uh, I mean, it's, it's not a, a full industrial efficient organization. Because because you have people coming from all around the, the world, mm-hmm. and they don't they don't think and they don't do engineering engineering uh, in in the same way. But not a problem. It's moving forward. The target of twenty twenty five is still good, mm-hmm. still on track, and uh, and uh, the, 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 all the the project team and and the partners like like us for example are committed to this date because it's always also to demonstrate the success of fusion is to demonstrate, to demonstrate that the project is on track mm-hmm. and will reach this key milestone of the first plasma in 2025. Yeah. Because uh, again, in in, uh, in a recent um, uh, fission project all around the world, uh, the, the difficulty is not, in, not on time, not on budget. Right. And this is not acceptable. So the ITER project, even if it's only a research facility, we have to reach this first big milestone, first plasma 2025, uh, to, to make all the, the, the partners and the people around confident in the way we are able to reach the goal of ITER is to demonstrate fusion reaction and to manage it. And so on the A system side and engage in momentum, you said it was called? Yes, um, you're right. What are your shorter term landmarks before 2025 to, to make sure that you guys are on track? <clears throat> uh, there is one. Uh, there is one while somewhere we are uh, involved through engage and momentum is to be able to start uh, the um, components uh, erection in March 2020, okay. which is next year, right? Yeah. So as engage, we have to deliver what we call the tokamak building to mm-hmm. hand over the tokamak building to. Uh, to, to the, 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 the ITER organization. And then ITER organization, through momentum, mm-hmm. could start the erection of the, 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 of the, the several components to uh, build the, the reactor itself. So you so. give the plan and then you yeah. start making the parts, but right. not the actual yeah. structure. Yeah. It's a big job. It's a big job. It's a very exciting job. Our engineers are... It's an international um, project in the, in the south of France. Yeah. So, as I said to my boss, when he say uh, we have a system has to be more international, more involved in the international market, and I say to my boss, I don't, I don't need to go to the world because the world came to me. Yeah. Right in the in, <laughs> in the north of uh, in the south of France. 
well, so which is fine. So when you enter the gate of Iter, it's no more France. It's it's the world because, as I said, you have people coming from all, all around the world, yeah. uh, which is uh, which is fun. So for our engineers, it's very exciting because the this Aix en Provence area is quite nice to live. <laughs> uh, uh, it's very interesting and uh, and the project itself is completely international. So so you are you are building a big things for the future. You are it's uh, in terms of techniques, technology. Um, uh, on the edge of, of many things. So again, uh, in, in terms of international working together, again, it's it's uh, it's very uh, it's very interesting and rich. So, the people uh, involved in this project today, as 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 system employee, they are very excited. And we have a lot of people saying, "Do you have a job for me, Anita?" I say, <laughs> it will come one day. Yeah, you'll yeah. have lots of jobs. And we have work. something very, which is working very well, uh, which is uh, we have a young graduate program. And we commit uh, ourselves to bring two, three, four, five, depends, young graduate from university to train them in fusion. Because as we said, we have to prepare. Fusion is a long-term commitment. Right. If we have a young graduate today, let's say in 2020, and the project will be full power in 2035, which is 15 years. So you need to have young men now, mm-hmm. young lady, sorry, uh, <laughs> to, to, to be ready to, to support the project to Absolutely. the end and after during the operation phase. Yeah. Right. So we decide as an engineering company, our main assets are the people. Uh, so we cannot invest in tools or manufacturing. We have to invest in the people and say, let's set up this young graduate program, bring uh, every day, bring new people inside. We train them. We uh, either we involve them in the project or they can move to another project, but they have, a, they have an international experience. And, uh, and uh, an engineer experience, which is which is quite unique. Yeah, and so, so it's, it's our commitment. Do most of these students already know about fusion, and they learned it in school? Not at all. They know they know about the engineering. Uh, so they, they they join our system to to be part of uh, of construction project or engineering project and what else. And then after we uh, we try to to, to bring some on on fusion. Either they are committed and, and they like this. Or they stay, or, or they, they, they prefer to move to another project. Why not? Yeah, no, it's great to get non-nuclear minds in the nuclear industry. Sure, sure, I agree, fully agree. Yeah, fully agree. Yeah, because if you have, it's it's um, it's true for for all the sectors. If you have only people working in the same area and the same thing, then it's 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 there is a risk to 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 regress and not to progress. In fact, right. Uh, so mixing the people, and this is. Also, the purpose of an engineering company to be able to move people from one sector to another one, uh, construction or, or something else, uh, to have to have people as as, as the uh, to to have an yeah, open mind from the people to be able to work together again, uh, because if you have a very 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 specific people, then it's more difficult for an engineering company, for an R and D company or for others company, you have to have strong expertise in some very specific area. For sure, you have to manage this. But as an engineering company, we have to train to manage the people to be able to move from one project to another project. So our background is really methodology, is uh, using digital tools, is uh, um, um, again uh, managing people working together as a team. Uh, this this is uh, our again our commitment to to manage our people. Yeah, and that's sort of why you work in momentum and engage, right? To get those different sets of expertise sort of on an international level together. Uh, yeah, again, is is to when we decided to create those two teams uh, with different companies, it was to uh, first of all you have, you have to set up a, a quite a big team. Uh, engaged today is one hundred fifty people, and it was three hundred people at, at the peak. Uh, for a moment, it will be the same. So, uh, if you are free, it's easier to bring people than if you are alone. First of all, um, gathering American, English with wood and Korean and French experience and way to work you look like iter in fact it's, you have exactly the same same uh, possibility than iter to, to 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 mix the people and um, so again we have to anticipate with our people to train them not only on, on the language but also on the culture right what what are the specificities of the korean culture what are the specificities of the american culture which is not completely the same as the european one and and Again, for for each for the people, it's 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 so exciting and interesting to be able to do that. Yeah, so. and then I wanted to ask as well as you're working on the, you know, 
big version of ITER and um, really just the test reactor, are you at the same time able to start developing your commercial model for France? Or is it really dependent on the <clears throat> test reactor? There's just no way to start. As I said, the idea is to of this partnership of seven partners, mm -hmm. including Europe, is to strengthen the industrial network, to have a network of industrial company able to build the components. Um, the next phase, I mean, after ITER, don't forget that I said that ITER will be in full power in 2035. Yeah. And they will use ITER as a research reactor for 10 years. Oh, okay. And they will stop ITER in 20, normally in 2045. Why stop it? Because 10 years operation should be enough to demonstrate what they have to demonstrate. And then after decommission. Hmm. Right? Could you not keep it running and use it to demonstrate maybe something else they, by maybe, that time? They will maybe took the, take the decision uh, uh, when they will operate the, the, the reactor. Today, the schedule is to, to operate it there during 10 years. Yeah. It's built for that. Interesting. Okay. And, and during those 10 years, to do a lot of experimentation, uh, mm -hmm. to again, to understand what's going on and to prepare the next phase, which will be for each partner to, to, to build, for each partner, or maybe uh, again with an uh, international collaboration, to build a reactor which will produce electricity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have already a name, it's called DEMO. DEMO is the next phase of fusion and this reactor will be able to produce electricity, which is not the case with ITER. Okay? Right. ITER is trying to demonstrate what, it, what we call the Q, Q10. I mean, we inject 50 megawatts and we are able to produce 500 megawatts during some seconds. Oh my gosh. Five, 10 seconds. Wow. Right, okay? Yeah. The next phase will be to produce it. So the idea of the partnership is to build ITER, operate ITER, then build on for each partner, a fusion reactor, which will be able to produce electricity, right? So let's say between 2050 and 2075, 2080, again, build one or several uh, demo reactor, which will, uh, which will be able to produce electricity. And then to, to reach, let's say, the industrial phase, uh, beginning of the next century. Mm. Am I clear with that? Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, So always. As we wrap up, your vision for the future for fusion, where do you see commercial fusion reactors really playing a big role? Again, I strongly believe that, um, I strongly believe that um, the commercial phase for the fusion reactor will be next century, beginning of next century, say in less than, than something, eight years. I won't, I won't see that, so it's easy for me to say that. But yeah. anyway, I believe it, it's on the way, it's on the track to do that. ITER is a, is a crucial... Uh, uh, is a key phase of, of this uh, fusion development. And uh, you, you may know that uh, there, is, uh, there, are, there are some others uh, fusion reactor technology under development in the world, especially in the US, but not only. Trying to find other alternatives uh, in developing because a lot of people think that ITER is very costly and it's very it will be very difficult to operate and so on. Uh, but again, I believe that uh, that's uh, that's the right way to, to progress in fusion, to build it here, to operate it, and then uh, it will open uh, really another phase uh, for development of fusion. Are we going to? Yeah. yeah. Are we going to use fusion for say like to power our cars or? As I said, industry? you can use fusion to power a shuttle, a space shuttle, to move in the galaxy. I'm sure of that. Ah, so this uh, is yeah. your your vision for yeah, fusion. Great. Space travel. Yeah, space travel. And exploration. And exploration. Amazing. Star Wars. <laughs> so, I'm, a, yeah. I'm, a strong fan, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of Star Wars, but there is a, a part of the answer. Again, this, most of the um, space shuttle, how do you call it, space vessel, uh, are, are powered by, by fusion. That's yeah. for sure. Yeah, I, mean, I love if you want to travel, If you want to travel for many, many uh, years, you need, you need um, a non-limited energy, which is fusion. Yeah. Bernard, you taught me so much. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> it was a pleasure.